few more sides to cover, um, but I, I, I mean, this, this is a great discussion. I like to, to do this. It makes it a lot easier to carry a conversation if you have feedback. I love that. Um, Padme, I think you're going to go through a few of these here. All right. <clears throat> the benefits of analytics. There's three key benefits that we identify, essentially visibility, power, and flexibility. So what they see, the power of being what you can do with the information you see, and the flexibility to actually do what you want to do. From a visibility perspective, we're talking about dashboards. Being able to manage project estimates for preliminary and de detailed cost estimates. Again, it's just visualizations showing, um, you know, d pretty charts, graphs, et cetera, that kind of get the point across that you need to in, in a dashboard sort of format. Early warning indicators. So things like being able to do stop lighting functionality. I know we can do this in Excel and all of that, but again, we're talking about the whole infrastructure behind the scenes that's combining the data, bringing it um, you know, together. Being able to look at the, uh, you know, identify the stop lights, which ones are the at risk uh, projects, being able to look at the actual variance and cost in this particular case, you know, see problems early so you can actually take some action to resolve it instead of just being reactive later on. I'll add to just this, uh, what, this project's over budget, which is the top one. They have a speedometer on the left where it's into the red, 40% of projects. On the right, those are the projects that are behind over budget. Mm -hmm. When they go back to budget, they automatically remove themselves from that chart. And if more projects go over budget, they'll automatically add themselves. So these are dynamic, growing charts. To do that on a spreadsheet or write a report, you got to manually decide which ones are going to be there and which ones are going off and walk through that process. To have the system being automated with that growth or shrink and the speedometer moves, those are kind of valuable, uh, makes it easier for the consumer. So this is one where you wanted to say no data available. <laughs> Blank. <laughs> Again, but this one is talking about the f areas of to focus on what really matters the most. So again, you have the capabilities. Um, this is showing the, uh, the CPI, KPIs, um, actual information. And then this bottom one is talk to showing you the number of over-allocated resources. So again, we have the speedometer. Uh, a lot of customers do like the visual, visual capabilities of the speedometer. Uh, you, the blue is the remaining units. Uh, the red is the over-allocated units. And you can click on any of the bars, and it'll drill, take you down into further to see which particular resource on which project in which month, which week, um, is, are they over-allocated. This one again is talking about the, uh, what do you call it, uh, exception handling, uh, being able to identify at risk projects early on. So then you can go ahead and take the proper, proper and necessary actions as needed. All of this functionality, all these columns, et cetera, unlike in Excel, this actually has, you can click on it and drill into the data to actually see what's making up those particular um, things to be flagged. And you can have those links set up in any which format that you want, and that's all kind of in the back end of, uh, of the analytic solution itself. This one, again, showing you different graphics on making decisions based on your project alignment. Is it really meeting your department's objectives? Is it meeting the, the state's objectives? Is it meeting your particular group's objectives? How, how, is the, how is it performing in relation to other projects, et cetera? The top components are all kind of filters, drop downs, et cetera, so you don't have to cre recreate that same report over and over for different views. Um, a user can actually click on that filter and filter the data based on whatever, is, whatever they're looking for, whether it's a fiscal period, year, uh, project name, strategic objective, et cetera. Again, it all comes down to being able to handle your uh, project costs. So the ones on the left, is good. the red is showing you the cost variances, and then you can actually click on it, drill to it further, kind of make the changes necessary where needed. Being able to view your earned value metrics um, over time. How is it changing over time? Where, where do you actually see it being affected? How can you change that? All of this is all about being proactive versus reactive. So you want to be able to look at all the d information you have, identify the trend, see where it's going, and take action before it's too late. 
Anything else you guys want to add on these? You know, one point I was going to make, I mean, a lot of what we're showing you here is, is again, if you think about it from the role, you know, the public, the executive, the PM, the team member, everybody has a view and has a perspective of what really matters or doesn't matter to them. And so, like, earn value, maybe from a program management or an oversight perspective, uh, from a, you know, a, a, you know, a chart of a, accounts and materials that have hit a project for cost, uh, that might matter to the PM uh, or to the accounting department. How I apply resources to a project, well, that might matter to a resource manager or a team lead uh, or the PM, okay? So there's just a ton of these different perspectives in where you can show and illustrate this kind of information, and that's, that's what we're uh, identifying here. One of the nice things in this particular way, uh, the time change one, is this, this line that you see up here. There's actually a play button right here. And what you can do is when you click the play button, the graph changes and this based on year. So there's 2010 and 2011 over here. Um, so you can actually change over whatever the time period that you've mentioned in there. So you can see how the earned value metrics change over time in that format. Use past performance to predict the future. Again, it's the same thing, right? Being able to look at how you how it's do been done in the past. What can you change to make it better moving forward? Being able to view resource allocation and limits over time. Again, it's just different different charts, different graphics. Again, this is this could fall into the same realm of the library that we talked about before, where you provide pre-built reports and dashboards for users of a particular group or the larger group, and then they can add whichever ones is are relevant to them, they can add that to their particular dashboard and personalize it for their projects, et cetera. So they don't have to look at what, ev everybody does not have to look at the same thing in the same way. The power of analytics. The key area here is the ability to do dynamic filtering, uh, being able to sort the information, being able to group it, et cetera. All of this information, as Keith mentioned before, it's all dynamic. So like once things change in the database, the data points change. Uh, when you add, add a filter, that filter might still apply, but you can, you can look at that for today's information versus a week ago or a month ago. So all of this information, an executive, you know, you might give them a report in one format and they say, well, I want to see what this was looking, you know, just for this particular month. I don't want to see the last quarter. You don't have to go back and rerun that report for the month. They can actually just use a filter and they will be able to look at it for that particular, particular month. One of the nice things about analytic solutions is that you, so this is where the business analyst role comes in, right? So you are the liaison between the business folks, the line of business folks, and the IT folks, and you can help guide the, and, and pre-create pre -create the navigation paths. So the navigation path here might be, this is a over-allocated resource, over-allocated by location. So depending on where, um, wh which project locate is located where, which ones are the ones that are over-allocated. You can click on a particular field and you can have it pre-configured to give them a certain path you want them to drill to. So then it goes into the details of the resource use utilization percentage. And here there's that bar again that changes over, over time. You can click on that information again and you can drill into the actual um, quarters, years uh, that that particular project has been, uh, that particular resource has been over allocated for. So the blue is the remaining units. Um, uh, remaining, I can't even read these. Remaining under limit and remaining over units. That makes sense. The projector needs a refresh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the screenshots like got stretched or something. Um, <clears throat> turn insight into action. Again, being able to drill down to the level where you can actually make the change. So one of the nice things with the solution, at least you know, from our perspective, is the ability that you can do all of the analysis that you want to do, but when you get to the point where, okay, this resource is on vacation this week and that's why you know it's behind schedule, I now want to assign somebody else to it. 
you don't want to go back into some other application, log in, change that to resource, wait for the ETL to happen, and then refresh. You want to be able to actually go and do all of that action as part of your analysis, right? So being able to look at the information, go in there, and actually go into the application to make a change where it's all kind of linked together and you're able to take action versus just look at the information and do nothing about it. I think we've talked about the GIS plenty here, um, but this is again to showing you financial information um, in a GIS format, again with some stop lighting, being able to drill into the information, um, highlighting what's important and so forth. <clears throat> you want to be able to, not, the drill down just doesn't just happen when it's like a tabular format or a graph. You can actually drill down, um, which, as we t saw in the New York DOT example, you can drill down on a GIS map. So if you see a particular project in a particular location that is really at risk and you want to analyze it further, you, don't, you can just click right on that map. It'll take you into the data points that make up that, that field and be able to drill further into the details of of where the problem lies. Again, these are just some examples of dashboards and reports that can look different. Um, so just kind of giving you different visualizations. The power of analytics can really be as complex as you want it to be, as simple as you want it to be in between. Um, you can also you know, use the guided navigation to actually tell a story. The ability to create new analytics on the fly. This is really where the self-service comes into play. Um, again, as a business analyst, you don't need to be a SQL developer. You don't need to be writing Java code, et cetera. Um, what you want to do is be able to pull the information together to make some sense out of it. So you don't want to go to IT, et cetera. You want, what you want is to be able to create it yourself really quick without a lot of tech knowledge. right? So again, when we talked about presentation layer earlier, so on the left-hand side, what you're seeing is that presentation mode. So there's different folders that are broken up by different fields, subject area. So there's like time, EPS, OBS, portfolio project, activities, et cetera. All of those, they could technically be coming from multiple different data sources, but as an end user, you don't know where it's coming from. You just know that you want this information and you want to add it to your report. So you just click the fields that you want and you drag it over. You just double click on it and adds it on the screen over here. Next thing you might want to do is add some filters. And again, there's no code written, nothing. You just click on the down arrow here and define the filter that you want. After that, you click on the results tab and it spits out the report for you that you just created by adding four fields. So this one is looking at it in a tabular format and you say, well, that's really nice, but I really want to see this in a bar graph. You know, what's the effort taken? Do I have to write my code? You know, do I have to write code again? Do I have to select the fields again? These solu analytic solutions are, are, are made so simple that this is intended for non technical users. Uh, <clears throat> so all you have to do is select a view that you want to see the report in. It pulls in all of the same data fields and you select the view that you want. And once you select what you want, this one is selecting a graph view as a bar graph and just a default vertical bar graph. And it just throws that information that you had just selected in there. Literally about five seconds probably, maybe 10 at the max. So that kind of eliminates the whole aspect of somebody coming to you um, in IT and saying, hey, can you build me a report with the, you know, I want to look at this information and so forth. From Pretty a easy, isn't it? That's what we're trying to do is make it not only for IT, because you can still look like the superhero. Oh, that's going to take me a long time. <laughs> oh, do, 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 do. there you're done. And then do your, your other work. Here's your report, or it can actually start to push some of this information to PMs, to actual executives, to directors. Eventually, they can start to consume this stuff, and we are starting to see companies go in that, that route. Is there any geocoding features in that? Absolutely. So um, one of the maps that's the drop down is the full GIS geocoding. You could do all There's the color map. coding about when it's going to be green and yellow and, and <clears throat> all that without knowing any language or programming through drop down and then ranges of information data. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff. I mean, even as I'm sure you can appreciate from the mapping perspective, uh, you're you're looking at creating different layers. Of, of drill down, and um, you can even import your own maps. I mean, there might be maps of buildings, a campus, uh, a data center. You could map anything you want, and right down to the uh, the, the shelf on a uh, a cabinet. 
uh, in a data center and then drill up to the, the, the country, you know? It's, it's really powerful stuff. You should plan on any GIS, any uh, business analytics system to have GIS reporting, mapping capabilities, and all of this ad hoc functionality. This is standard how it should be, all systems. From a flexibility standpoint, again, you know, we've been talking about the same thing, the being proactive versus reactive. So the analytic solution should have the ability to send notifications, whether it's via email, whether it's a text getting sent to your phone, whether it's a website that's publishing with an alert on it. Um, and the nice thing is when it, when it sends it, you're able to look at the information right on that device. You don't have to come back into your office, log into your computer, and then be able to see the data. You can, it either will, can send you a snapshot in your email itself, or it can give you a link which you click, and then it gives you the real-time data of what, what you're looking at. This is another uh, view where we talked about before, access on the go. You have the same application available to you, not just for your desktop, your laptop, but also for your mobile devices, handheld devices, so forth. So phones, iPads, Android devices, whatever it may be. You look at the same information. And again, all the security carries over. So if you're able to see certain information and do certain things in the desktop, uh, in the, on your laptop, you'll be still be able to do the same sort of things and you'll only be looking at data that's relevant to you that you have access to see. The other nice thing is you have the ability to export to Excel from the dashboard. So if you see a chart or, or a report or a table that you really like and you want to export it to Excel, there's an uh, export button that you can click and it takes you right into Excel. Another nice thing is you actually have the ability, this is the PDF output or the briefing books. Um, I think briefing books comes later. But this at this point is a static report, but it could be something that's scheduled to be printed automatically or scheduled to be distributed as a PDF to all of the project managers and so forth. Any questions? Hey, what happened? Skipped a whole bunch of stuff, no? I don't think so. No, I think oh. That is you. Yeah, so <coughs> we're coming close to the end. We're just kind of just kind of wrap up, uh, you know, some of the mm -hmm. key points we made. Um, and and again, I mean, it's. Uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things we've kind of gone through. Um, you can you can get a get a view of this slide deck and you know get a lot of ideas from it. Uh, but you know, the key messages that we're we're looking at is you know we, we've got a, a system that uh, uh, is able to drive to information in a relatively simple format from an analytics perspective when we show you a lot of these things uh, yes Excel can do some of that stuff yes uh, you can get this information sometimes in a transactional database that you might build in access but what what you really can't do is typically create a very simple correlative, and that's one of the key words, is correlative way of relating this information together uh, between the simple guided navigation and the underlying information, which can be fairly complex to, to roll up in, in analytics, but essentially brings you to a, uh, uh, an easy interface. So these are a couple of simple examples, just revisiting. Um, yeah, you know, one of the things we like to point out, I'm, I'm a cyclist and, and I, 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 they, were, they were asking about me, you know, this earlier, do, you know, does this make sense? And to me, it absolutely makes sense. Because I've actually literally gone and looked for rims and spokes and hubs and things, thinking about, wow, I'm going to build the ideal wheel. And at the end of the day, it's like, nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to buy it. I, I just, that's, that's just too complicated. It sounds like fun. It's an experiment, but I'm just not going to do that. Uh, but that's, that's the kind of thing that I think is almost more prevalent with data warehousing than it is with uh, buying any application you might be thinking about out there to optimize and, and improve the way you're doing things. Um, you know, just from the perspective of you know, what you get, thinking about uh, all the different elements when you're going to build from scratch. You gotta you know, figure out how you're gonna collect this information, um, the way you're going to design it the kind of metrics and dashboards that are going to be relevant. You know, is there some way we can figure out how we could get this out of the box a little quicker? 
And all of this can map into a lot of the prepackaged information that illustrates how this all comes together. Um, I think earlier in the presentation, uh, Pedmini had a slide up that shows all the different business functions that typically use analytics. And the reality is, you know, when you look at project portfolio management, uh, and I, I know this area from a, from a data management perspective is getting a lot more respect now than it used to, in my opinion, about 10 years ago, where people are going, well, they all want to know this stuff, but nobody is willing to do that, do, you know, think about it as a class one mission critical system. And the reality is so much of the information that is related in project delivery comes from systems like vendor management, procurement, grants, uh, GL, ARAP, resource management, talent, you know, and it's incredible if you think about the interaction of a lot of this information and how it uh, comes together uh, to, to paint the picture you want. Um, and um, from a perspective of why would you do it, and what benefit am I going to get out of it? I mean, typically, when you think about the project at the onset, I mean, these, these, these look like really expensive projects, but the reality is a lot of what is forgotten is what it actually takes on a day-to-day -day basis or on a week-to-week, month-to-month, you know, the, the, the person who keeps pinging you on the shoulder, taking you away from what you're doing so that you can, on the moment's notice, gather information and present it to them. I mean, all of that stuff adds up to a tremendous amount of cost and efficiency. And that's not even talking about the transparency and all that other sort of intangible benefit of illustrating how you operate on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, from an example, you know, we look at here, you know, it cost us $2 million to implement business intelligence. Obviously, the size of the project is depending on what you're trying to do. But at the end of the day, it costs these guys $5 a mile to operate a garbage truck. So they're looking at ways to optimize and, and look at routes and look at uh, the, the way you collect the, 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 the garbage and, and analyze this information to figure out how they can save money. Because it's just a lot of money out the door. and. Uh, there's only so much you can raise taxes to pay for this stuff. And so this is, this is one of the key messages. Um, so again, I mean, just bringing back to a few of the slides that we had right at the very beginning, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of information that is not going to re reduce by any stretch uh, in, in the coming years. And, you know, how you use that information really, really can make a massive difference. And, uh, you know, to my point I already just made, really, is that it's, it's, it's growing. I mean, you're, you're literally looking at making uh, decisions uh, based on a tremendous amount of information, and you need to be able to make sense of that stuff. Um, so, next question, how do you make sense of it? Uh, and that's really the call to action from, from your perspective is, you know, where do you take this? What are the sorts of things you think about when you um, uh, think of the way you're doing things today and what uh, you could be doing differently to uh, instill an understanding of how data analytics can be applied. Um, and short of uh, Q&A, that's what we have for you today. And uh, we're a couple of minutes short, but uh, we hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to take them, or we can have a chat after, after the class. Awesome. Free to go. Thanks.